Hi, this is Patrick Clark, founder of Lucky Sheep Wool Sleeping Bags. Some people wonder if the wool Lucky Sheep Sleeping Bag is backpackable, if it compresses down small enough and weighs small enough. It is. It's completely backpackable. It, the 25 degree rated rewilder weighs 4 pounds and compresses down to about 11 inches by 11 inches and fits into a backpack like this. Let's go to a place where you can hear me and I'll show you how it works. There are two models of Lucky Sheep sleeping bags and one is the Rewilder which is inside this pack. It's called a Rewilder. It has a merino liner and um, I'm going to unpack my pack here. This is all my other gear which stacks on top and, and uh, the, the sleeping bag and clothes are stacked down in the bottom of this bag so with inside a liner, a waterproof liner to keep everything dry that's in there. Here's my clothes and here is my Rewilder sleeping bag compress this down to about 11 inches by maybe 10 inches or something. It's between the Rewilder and the Tree Hugger is that the Rewilder has a merino uh, liner on the inside and the Tree Hugger is organic cotton liner and that makes the Tree Hugger lighter and it also makes it not as warm. So. The tree hugger goes down to about 35 degrees, the two inch thick loft. And the rewilder goes down to about 25 degrees with the two inch thick loft. So I'm, I'll show you the difference between them. I recommend the rewilder for backpack, generally if you do a lot of backpacking, the rewilder works better for wicking moisture and it's a slightly warmer and um, so this is the merino liner and the tree hugger which is about a pound lighter than the rewilder is organic fabric on both the inside and the outside organic cotton so um, the first thing that you need to know is, in general, when you're handling the bag, like grab it from both sides all the way through the whole thickness of, of the bag um, just to keep it more intact. Like when you're pull it, putting it in the stuff sack and pulling it out of the stuff sack, grab the whole bag. Don't just grab the, like the top surface. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how how the strap attachment system works. Um, so I need to get my pad out here, my sleeping pad, which I use a, a closed cell foam pad. You don't have to, but that's what I use and recommend in general. And um, so you put your pad and you take the strap the strap attach the straps here. To, these come with your sleeping bag and they have toggles on them. So you stretch out your your string with one toggle uh, goes like this to adjust the size of the loop and you, you extend it out and then put it over your sleeping pad like this and you have two Two of the toggles go on the top surface of your pad and you got one for the top and one for the bottom here. And flip it over there and put it about, one's about a third of the way from the top and one's about a third of the way from the bottom. And have your toggles right here. 
These are adjustable toggles. They're really, they kind of act like buttons. Then you take your sleeping bag and you, there's, there is, are two loop attachments on each side, right and left of the bag. So these two, these two attachments, they correspond with where the toggles are. So you, you just take one toggle, it acts like a button, you flip it over the loop, and then you pull it, you pull it in towards the middle. And um, on this side, it's another one. Slide it in. And also, another thing you can do is you can twist this loop once, or maybe even twice sometimes, and it and it um, might it stays on the toggle tighter. So it's kind of a good idea to twist it, give it a twist before putting it on the toggle. Okay, so. Toggle one, toggle two. Now you don't have to do this. This is just if you want your sleeping bag to be pinned down. I do it. I do it in cold weather and not in warm weather. Personally, and um, okay. So now let's see how it works. So, your sleeping bag is pinned down in the middle and you want, you want it so that these two, the two edges of the outer edges kind of just to pretty much meet, meet together. That's how close you want it. So slide your toggle art. Usually that's pretty much what you're aiming for. But it could be opened a little more than that. So that, that's where it is. All right, now let's try it out and see how it works. I'll crawl in there and give it demo. So this way, when you have it pinned down like that, it makes it so you can turn around, move around in your sleeping bag, and your sleeping bag doesn't doesn't move, so that you don't get a cold spot. So you can like move all the way, ro roll around inside your bag, and it stays put. So there's also a flap on the top. And this, this is to cinch it down around your neck so there's no, not a draft spot around your neck. So you just do that manually. You just pull it, pull it tight around your neck. Okay, and it also comes with a stuff sack. So not, this is a cotton stuff sack and it's very nice for um, putting your extra clothes in. Let's say you have, uh, let's just say you have, you know, you, ha you're, you have some clothes that you're not wearing to bed and you put them in your stuff sack and you can adjust it to the size of pillow you want. And, uh, and then that, that's for your pillow, stuff sack pillow. Okay, so if you don't, if you don't want to use the toggles, just don't use them. Most of the time, most people actually don't use the tie down system most of the time. They just they just use the bag as a quilt, and what that means is that instead of a mummy bag, bag that you zip, it's a quilt that, that pulls together, the, there's flaps on each side that fold together, and when you're laying on top of that, your pressure pins it down, and that's how the bag seals instead of a zipper. And so this is how it works without the toggle uh, strap attachment system. So you just 
you, you sit down on your mat, then you stick your feet in like this, and then that, and then your bag goes on top of you like this. And then the, the opening of the bag, that, that's what goes underneath you. So you, what you do is you, you, hold, you pull one side and kind of sit on, sit on one side and then, and then what you do is you kind of roll over to the other side and push, push it down and then, uh, and then you kind of wiggle inside and then, um, and then you, and then you're, you're snug in there, no drafts. And then that, that's, that's the best way to use it because you can get in and out like really quickly and that's, that's like super comfortable, more like sleeping at home on a bed when you're not trapped inside, a, inside the zipper. So the next thing on the list is how to create a couple's bag. So let's just say you're camping with your partner and you, and uh, so what you do is you, you put one bag on the bottom and you unzip it, you unzip it. This, this foot box, unzips so that the whole bag can be completely flat like this if you want it to and that's good for ventilation if it's if it's warmer you can unzip it and then you and then you it's a uh, better for warmer weather so if you want a couple's bag there's two things you can do if it's warm you can actually just lay one on the bottom and lay one on the top and if it's cold you you, have, you can zip them together, zip two bags together at the bottom. So unzip, unzip that, and then, see, it's flat. And then they are designed so that they will, they will zip together at the bottom. Like this. like that. So now you've got two bags zipped together. And then, and then the way it still works pretty cool because you still have your flap system on one side and your partner has the flap on the other side. So that is how the couple's bag works. And that can explain and your temperature rating too. So the other thing is um, don't be afraid of the dew because you're in wool. So you can get you can get wet and because the wool is going to be wicking moisture away from the heat source which is your body. So you can just you know kind of be out in a lot of wilder places now. You don't have to zip yourself up in a tent and hide from the dew and other moisture like frost and fog and mist and light rain and stuff like that. And um, another cool thing about the Lucky Sheep sleeping bag, you can extend the temperature by 10 degrees. So that means that, means that if you normally would be comfortable at 30 degrees, then if you go inside your bag and breathe and pull it over your head and breathe inside the bag, it will warm you up 10 degrees, so you'll actually be able to sleep at about 20 degrees and still be comfortable. So it's also very therapeutic to do that. It actually enhances your sleep. It's kind of a little weird at first. You might feel a little claustrophobic, but you get used to it and uh, give it a try because it's pretty amazing. And you can also hide from the bugs that way. Um, why it has a hoodless design, there's no hood on it because the, what that does is it makes it so that you that you you just use um, your hat and and you can use an extra sweater in cold weather and and it saves you from having extra material on your bag. Um, some question and answers. Doesn't the moisture from your breath make it damp and colder inside the bag when you're breathing inside the bag? No, it doesn't because the reason why, Yes, your breath is, does have moisture in it. And in another bag, in any other kind of synthetic bag, down or down, 
fill or synthetic fill back because you've got synthetic fabric no matter which one you have. You, you can't do that because it will just create moisture. That moisture will condense, be cold, make you colder. But in the wool bag, what happens is the moisture escapes and as, as you continually wick the moisture away for, in the wool. So that's why you can do that in this Lucky Sheep Freedom Bag. So how much of a difference does the merino liner versus the cotton liner make? Well, the merino liner is really ideal for, for backpacking and bike camp, camping and um, for any kind of serious outdoor adventure. I would recommend the merino liner because it it's, excels at wicking moisture and that's pretty much what you want when you're backpacking, you know, when you're outside in nature. But now if you're just like you do occasional camping and you know in the summer even um, it, it may not really make that much of a difference because you're if you're mostly using a sleeping bag indoors it may not make that much of a difference although it's actually kind of nice to have it indoors as well. Um, what kind of sleeping pad do you recommend? I rec uh, what I like is the closed cell foam pad because I did used to use a Thermarest air inflatable pad and I just don't like, the main thing I don't like is the ergonomics. Like when you sleep on air, it's really unnatural and it hampers your circulation. And so you can read, I have a whole blog series about sleeping on a firm surface. So I like the foam pad because it's really more of a the firm surface type surface that more conducive to deep sleep. Does this work in a hammock? Yes, the quilt design works very well in a hammock. It's easy to get into and out of. So why do you use cotton on the outside shell? Isn't cotton moisture absorbent? Okay, yes it is. However, it's on the outside. So it's there because it makes a superior windbreaker. And, um, and it's a very thin cotton that doesn't absorb much water, so it can actually be completely wet. And inside your bag, you're inside the bag, you're not going to notice that wet. So if it does happen to get wet, you're still good. and You're much better than any other type of bag out there. At Lucky Sheep Sleeping Bags, we believe that there is more to sleeping outside than simply weight. There was also the other factors con to consider are humidity factor. So the similar to wind chill factor. If you're humid, then you're going to you're going to be colder. So in a wool sleeping bag, it's wicking moisture away. It's, you're going to feel drier, and you're going to feel warmer. The breathability. That means ability to ventilate, not feel stuffy and clammy. Well, that that's the whole point of wool. That's what it excels at. So why not put it in the sleeping bag too, like you have it in the rest of your gear, clothing. So uh, sleep quality, the ability to go through all four sleep stages easily. Now, I mean, we go outside to sleep, don't we? I mean, we're sleeping, we have a sleeping bag, we're trying to sleep, and you wanna recover and, and be ready for the trail the next day. So you wanna, you know, do all you can to sleep well. And um, it's proven that your heart rate it is raised by 20 beats per minute. 20 beats. That means if you normally beat at 60 beats, it's now going to be 80 beats per minute. So when your heart rate beats faster, then you're also your brain waves and your breathing are also going faster, and that's going to prevent you from going into a deep sleep. That's why down sleeping bags with synthetic, synthetic fibers don't work. And then there's comfort, so that means the perceived softness and warmth. And, the, and you know, uh, synthetic fabric feels icky, clammy, cold. Versatility, so it works through a wide range of temperature and weather extremes. So you can sleep well even if the weather changes. Health and vitality, you wake up feeling great with a ton of energy. Ecological impact, it's a renewable, wool is a renewable resource that doesn't pollute or exploit animals. So when considering these factors, wool wins on all counts. What wool lacks in weight and volume 
advantages compared to down, it makes up in other areas. Congratulations on your lucky sheep wool sleeping bag.